Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session about innovative OTT ROIs, an introduction to common and alternative revenue models for media startups, revenue models which work across all devices and platforms. Of course, there are many more ROI models than the, the ones we're looking at today, but these are just the ones that work on every device and every screen. Well, let's play church a little bit, maybe. Um, turn to your neighbor and, and tell them thank you for joining this session. Yeah, all right, well, thanks, yeah. I, I see you've been to church before, you've done it. Perfect, thank you, thank you for looking so great. I know uh, you're probably just here to relieve your feet from the stress of walking, but thank you for uh, your attention anyways. Uh, all right, well, I personally believe that um, audience is currency. Uh, you just need to know where to exchange. And, uh, well, my name is Andreas Kisslinger. Oh, there is a, I'm glad they put a photo up there so you can see me there in case you can't see me here. My name is Andreas Kisslinger. I'm CEO of Cross Media Group, primarily known for uh, the end-to-end -end OTT provider, Lightcast.com. Uh, the media cloud uh, right over there. So hope to see you later after the session. Uh, just a little background about myself. Uh, you can hear probably in my accent. I'm a little kid from the tiny country of Austria. We're trying to bring the hills back to life at the sound of music again. And I'm keeping a little bit of my Schwarzenegger accent just to distinguish myself from the crowd. So hope that's okay. Um, we, if, if anyone speaks German, we can, we can talk in my native language afterwards. Um, uh, at Lightcast, we believe you, uh, uh, in the mid-market, most publishers need a real end-to-end -end turnkey solution. Everything from A to Z in the toolbox to build, manage, deliver, market, monetize, all in one place. Uh, we also believe that uh, automating distribution allows to maximize uh, viewership growth and never limit our audience growth and go to as many platforms as possible and make that as easy and turnkey as possible. We also believe in, uh, uh, in every, every publisher to, uh, has, has deserved a diversified business model um, uh, to not ever limit our ROIs to just one specific monetization uh, model. So that's what we'll look at today. And last but not least, we believe in consistency usually wins. Uh, by growing audiences across consistent websites, mobile apps, and TV apps that work, look, and function, and feel in your branding the way you want it to be consistently across all platforms. So let's look at the usual suspects, the most common ROI models that everyone thinks of. And these are also the uh, monetization tools that most of our publishers uh, first ask about when they come to us. Number one, advertising. Of course, you guessed it, all the DSPs, the SSPs, the ad networks fully integrated um, into on-demand, live, linear, wherever you can. Pre-mid, post-roll, you have to have a grip on that. So that is, of course, the most usual uh, common ROI model. Secondly, subscriptions. Uh, of course, you can integrate anything into a subscription. You should be able to integrate on-demand, audio, video, live events, linear streams. If your OVP can't do that for you in one click, then uh, please come and talk to us. Um, Pay-per-view events, of course, uh, that's, that's currently quite important um, as uh, many organizations are forced to transition to virtual experience and keep selling tickets to their live events, right? So, of course, a very common ROI model. Um, let's look beyond the beaten path at some alternative ROI models that most uh, publishers don't think of at first glance. So that is simply generating leads, generating data. Uh, that is uh, one great opportunity. Which organization on the planet could not use more data, more leads? I think most organizations can use more leads. Even our nonprofit customers need more leads. Uh, and of course, everyone else uh, does too. And that is a great ROI actually for OTT distribution and multi-platform distribution. Your apps, your properties should be able to capture leads for you. Um, and, and you can use, of course, that data for ma in many, many different ways. Um, lead data is valuable no matter what, but of course, to promote product sales, for instance, most organizations do sell a service or a product of some sort. Um, even vloggers, even YouTubers, content creators that come to us um, are, are going beyond advertising, of course. They do have merch, they do have various products to sell. And, and so this, it's critical to generate leads data and your OTT properties should be doing that for you 
all day long. And then um, serving ads from your own sponsors where no one else gets a cut. You are paid directly. Advertisers, sponsors that you showcase pre-mid post rolls straight into your on-demand content, live and linear content um, that you get paid uh, for directly. That goes far beyond any CPM you can ever dream of. So, th and that goes also, that works really well for small audiences, for startups, media startups that are just getting started. We always recommend put a few sponsors on, sponsors on your content to get, to get you going and get you funded uh, in the initial startup phase. Um, and then of course, that also uh, includes fundraising, Patreon, crowdfunding, uh, donations for those organizations that, that need that. Your OTT properties should be able to promote all of that for you. Uh, but of course, not every revenue model works equally well for every type of organization. So it's uh, super important to understand uh, your business, uh, your, your business objectives and business plan and to select the most suitable model, especially also when it comes to viewership. How big is your viewership now? And we, we kind of make a simple distinction between large and small viewership, uh, just to simplify it. Uh, and that's the million mark, right? So the million viewer mark a month, we say like above that, it's a large viewership, below that, uh, it would be more like a startup or, or a small viewership. So for large viewerships, we know advertising is fantastic. It's scalable, it works really well, but it does need a large viewership. Um, uh, subscriptions work for all sizes, really. Pay-per-views uh, events are sold to large viewerships really well. That works very, very well, but now, for small viewerships, what do you do with publishers who are just getting started in the first few years building an audience um, that is below a million a, a month? So then add sponsors. Like I mentioned earlier, just bring on some sponsors, showcase them across all your OTT properties to get you started and fund it through the startup phase. Subscriptions works well for small audiences also, also promoting product sales. Um, as well. Here's a quick chart and we don't have time to look at it in detail and it probably will be a bit too small but I want to magnify a few um, highlights out of this table. Uh, it shows uh, some of the most common OTT revenue models by comparison, subscription, flexcription, advertising, sponsors, product sales and donations. Uh, some of them are more volume dependent. Uh, it just requires uh, greater audiences to make them work. Uh, to uh, take out advertising, for instance, it's extremely volume dependent. Um, well, for instance, ad sponsors or um, product sales uh, is comparatively little volume dependent. Uh, you might wonder about flexcriptions and what that is. That's what we call a flexible subscription, which allows the subscriber to set the subscription uh, price that they're paying. And believe it or not, that actually works uh, quite well for many organizations who either have a fan, pay, fan base that's really passionate about the product or, um, uh, or subscribers that, um, that uh, need an, an, an added value or additional perks from the organization and are willing to, to pay more. And, um, so, uh, and in some cases, uh, um, publishers who would otherwise give their content away for free anyways, um, and just ask for a registration in order to collect uh, lead data. Why not also ask, well, if you're willing to pay a minimum of a dollar, well, set your own subscription price. And um, so that's, uh, that actually works uh, surprisingly well. And, uh, and then of course, uh, probably at the bottom row there, important the expected time to break even on the invest investment. Uh, it's quite different. Um, and for advertising, as we know, that, that usually takes the longest. Um, let, I'll just quickly uh, take out three uh, ROI models um, that we all know of and just to, to uh, highlight what we discovered over the past 12 years in business in, in the OTT space of uh, what's important for publishers. For subscriptions and pay-per-view sales, a multi-platform subscriber system. Um, it's uh, very simple. Uh, the only way to really provide a, what we call a Netflix experience um, uh, to uh, the viewers of our customers is to provide them an opportunity to register, create an account, select their own username and password which they can remember and use to, to sign in uh, and out of all their devices across every app that the publisher makes available. And uh, that is really the only way to do it. 
it does require a central uh, subscriber system, multi-platform subscriber system like Lightcast Easy Pay or anything similar to that. I think there are a handful of these systems on the planet today. Um, that is really the only way to really effectively doing it. In-app purchases are great and they're great as a supplement, maybe even an add-on to sell additional things, but you need to make your um, subscribers um, uh, you have to give them the opportunity to watch your content, your premium content across all devices, in their pocket, on their walls, in the living room, everywhere, in their household, uh, and on the road, uh, with the same subscription. They're paying one time and they can watch it everywhere. And um, that is really the only satisfying experience for subscribers in the end. Uh, for advertising, as we all know, fill rates uh, can be uh, a challenge um, for any, any uh, demand partner you might be integrating. You might get 10% from one partner, 20% from another. To, to maximize fill rate, there is no way around a multi-source um, advertising system uh, which feeds in from numerous SSPs and uh, various um, uh, demand partners that you are integrating to maximize fill rate in a waterfall setup uh, where the different demand partners are called in succession at your priority, you can say, okay, priority one is this ad network number one, and if it doesn't return an ad, call number two, three, four, five. You, and, and then, of course, to have your own house ads in the mix, because uh, as a publisher, you want to promote your own services, your own products, your own events, um, as well as maybe your own sponsors who pay you directly. Um, and you want to roll those in, uh, with including geotargeting, demand, uh, demand priority, and then inventory allocation to these different campaigns, and then to play it out across all your properties, web, mobile, social, TV apps, it needs to run everywhere. So that you, you need a system like that. Um, and um, it's not hard to do, actually. And let me see if the, yep, there, there we go. Alternative ROIs, I just want to uh, focus on this one, and that's capture data to leverage OTT to generate leads. Um, that can range anywhere from just collecting an email address. That could be sufficient and that's the lowest threshold and, and you'll, you won't lose as many viewers um, just uh, with collecting an, an, an email address. Uh, of course, you might lose a few, but not as many. But then, of course, you can build out that form and ask for as much as you like, including shoe size, favorite uh, cuisine and everything. But uh, the more you ask for, the more viewers, of course, you'll probably lose on the way, but at um, you know, just email capture or a full, full capture form with everything you want to ask for, all the way to an optional account creation uh, setup that you know, requires a registration, uh, selection of username, password to, um, to authenticate, to come back and watch. Um, that's all, that user data is all yours uh, as a publisher. Should, you should own all that data uh, and be able to import that or directly connect that to your CRM. Uh, for further business applications. Uh, sponsors, um, serving premium postural video ads and co-branding apps for your sponsors. Uh, what you need is a multi-platform ad server with multi-source, multi-campaign capabilities. Of course, an OVP, a CDN, and an app developer, or all of that in one swing, uh, all in one place. Yeah, uh, for startups and NPOs, um, fundraising is always uh, important and your OTT properties should be doing that for you. Um, what it requires most of all uh, is a support worthy cause. <laughs> it's a lost case if you don't have that. <laughs> so, um, that, But then of course uh, you, you should be able to connect all your uh, OTT properties uh, through your CRM and have all the generated lead data uh, feeding on to uh, let's say Patreon and others to, to make it very easy to, to fundraise. Uh, or directly integrate donation capabilities on the spot wherever possible. All right, so that's it. Really, I'm coming in for a landing. Um, what we would always recommend is uh, deploy at least three ROI tools parallel to maximize revenues. Um, don't put your egg, all your eggs in one basket. Um, uh, just uh, select any of the, those, you know, fundraising, promote product sales, sponsors, you know, subscription offers, Pay, sell pay-per-view, live events, inc include advertising, or all of the above. We have publishers who do all of this, and, and that's usually the best 
best way of doing it and monetizing and have some redundancy and, and to you you never know you know maybe advertising would, will take off for you as your viewership completely uh, grows like crazy but maybe maybe you'll you'll do better with product sales and yeah, just uh, try out different ROI models and compare them and and um, uh, in the end uh, always always remember that audience is currency you just need to know where and how to exchange. Well, thank you for your attention. My name is Andreas with Lightcast.com, and we're right over there. Thanks so much. Uh, I would love to hear from you and, and get to know you and learn more about what you do, your business, your organization, um, and hopefully we can have a quick chat over there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.